all right everyone welcome back to another starcraft casting it's indy here and we're gonna go into game number three maru versus cure so maru has spawned in the bottom left hand corner as the blue terran player and cure in the top right hand corner as the red terran so this will be another tvt match so i'm really curious to know what's going on through cure's mind i mean cure is down uh 2 0 right now um and you know the thing is he's been using the same exact play style same exact strategies these last two games and maru's been responding with with you know better micro better decision making and uh, also another macro focused game and so i'm very curious to see what's going on through cure's mind right now is he going to change it up this game or not i mean if he's going to do the exact same uh, same build order you know that that goes back to what i was saying in the last game which is like you know if you're going to build the same build order and you're not going to do anything super super different are you going to get the same result and chances are if maru responds with the exact same responses he did the first two games the results are going to be the same so i'm very curious to see how cure is going to change this up right now we're going to have some scouting scvs as before they're going to kiss right here yum yum and now we're, we're I mean, we've got two refineries. We've got a supply depot and a re re reaper building out of the barracks. It looks to be like the very same opening, except right here. Ooh, this is a nice, uh, this is a nice ramp right here. Just having, not ramp, sorry. This is a nice build on the supply depot, having, you know, vision on this upper ground right here. Uh, as you guys know, the reaper can hop uh, between these two ledges right here and like seriously harass the mineral line. And so just being able to build uh, on the uh, the little ground right here, this little gateway area right here, what is it, jumpway, uh, is going to be really, really helpful. And so Maru's doing the exact same thing. He's camping his Reaper out in the front. Uh, ah, and so is Kira. So Kira's going to take a somewhat of a less aggressive approach to this match. But I don't think it's going to be any different. I really don't think so. I mean, this is a third TVT round. And uh, I, I would seriously love, like, a huge transition into, like, Mech or Sky Terran or something from Cure. Just so that he can catch up and really throw Maru off guard. But, I mean, th both of these South Korean players, they are the top of their games. And they've been winning so many. And I'm just looking at Maru's and Cure's uh, data in the last couple days and or at least you know a couple days ago and just seeing how much they've won and maru by far has won much more in terms of tournament prize money i think at one point he won three hundred thousand uh, dollars us in one year and kira has been very consistent hasn't won a huge prize pool like that but he has been very consistent with his wins and if anything he's actually steadily increasing his wins uh over the last several years so uh, 2018 was the year for both players, uh, I believe, uh, to, to really win a, a nice sizable uh, sum in tournament winnings. And so right here, Maru is going to do that, uh, you know, widow mine, uh, widow mine build order right here, just camping at the very front door of his base, uh, just to prevent any sort of run buys by Hellions or even uh, Reapers. And again, here are you're doing the same builder you have three aliens three three no five reapers okay just a little bit more just a little bit um but still gotta be careful gotta be careful oh man you know what would be really cool everyone is if we could actually have like a i, I don't know if they do this at the tournaments where they interview each player after uh these sets of matches and really you know really delve into the minds of these players what was Kier thinking at this time he must have been incredibly stressed he must have had uh, a lot of thought going into it or maybe this was his like eighth match of the day who knows and so uh, anything could be going on in Kier's mind right now but the having a 2-0 loss uh is gonna you know it's it's gonna take some catching up and remember this is a best of five game so a lot of psychological warfare a lot of psychological pressure is on both players and you know in, in my opinion maybe what kira was thinking during this time is like you know what i want to build uh, a safe build or a build order that i know absolutely from the back of my hand i'm just gonna be incredibly safe this uh this game 
and, and I'm going to try to do everything I can, right? You know, and the thing is, decision fatigue is a huge issue, especially if this is a third game in a series or even a, a tenth game of the day. Your decision making is not going to be as strong as if you were playing your first game of the day or the first game of the series. So, you know, I, I'm just really curious as to what is going on in Kira's mind. Man, this the stress load must be incredible. Maru, I mean, Maru is up 2-0. He has some flexibility. He doesn't need to go super, super crazy. He doesn't need to do any random cheese or any, 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 um, you know, out of the ordinary plays. I mean, if he just plays conservatively from here on out, the same way that he's been playing, and Mar and here's plays the exact same way, you know, this is an easy 4-0 for him. Like this, this would be a very easy 4-0. He doesn't have to do much thing. He's like, well, if you're going to play the same way, I'm going to play the same way. I'm going to play the exact same build. I'm going to build little mines. I'm going to do everything the same. And eventually I'm just going to overtake you because I know how to counteract your build order. I know when to push your buttons. I know when to harass your uh, expansions. I know when uh, to really go out there and, and, and contain you. And, you know, if, if that's the case, then I'm not going to spend too much thinking time. I already know this, and I'm just going to have fun and just play a normal game for me. And so, you know, just just being uh, able to understand each opponent and really understand their stress load of both, it, it plays a massive, massive role. And that, it's the same thing for Go. And uh, you guys know I do cast Go commentary and go is 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 a very similar type of psychological warfare i mean if you're up against a player that you've been playing where it's like a best of three and the first two games they've won you know you're going to be under a lot of intense pressure because you want to catch up or best of five sorry you want to catch up and and you're going to try everything that you can to catch up and maybe maybe just maybe cure in this case knows that he is behind and maybe he's assuming that Maru would think that he's going to do something crazy like a, ra a double racks cheese or a proxy racks uh, or like a, a huge all in with uh, with mech or something like that. And so I think he's banking on the idea that uh, Maru is probably going to have that on the back of his mind. And so he's just going to keep playing a normal game just to throw Maru off 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 uh, off his uh, off his uh, tilt or off his game till tomorrow there we go <laughs> so uh, that could be the strategy that could be the psychological warfare strategy it's just you know treat everything like normal it's like a first game i'm gonna keep doing everything normal and Maru's gonna be like hey you're, you're kind of down what's going on why are you playing so normal maybe maybe but anyways sensor towers is gonna go up for Maru. he is gonna have siege tank and cyclone uh, available that raven count is going to go up for maru with a double vikings right here and so maru does have a pretty sizable army he does have a good positioning his tanks are sieged up uh cure putting down a scan just to see what he's really dealing with and honestly with the amount of army supply right here and even though you have a medevac uh you're not going to be able to break through uh the tank line that easily especially when majority of your army is uh, very squishy Okay. But here's the thing, while Cure's army is out on the field, his natural expansion or his third expansion is very empty right now. So if there was any chance of a run by, uh, if there's any chance of a run by, which there isn't because uh, Cure also has split his forces uh, to watch the southern entrance as well. If there was any run by either medevac drop or anything, uh, Cure's going to be left undefended at home and that is a huge advantage uh, for Maru. Uh, Maru is starting to get those medevacs out. We might see some drop shenanigans right here. There is no sensor tower right here. There is a command center. So this command center will be kind of vulnerable for the time being. Uh, but there are no sensor towers. There is no uh, turret missiles at base. And so what we do see right now is, is just Kira's army pretty much on the doorsteps of maru's trying to contain trying to do like a psychological contain right here but maru's like you know what you can try all you want i'm up to oh uh if you want to try to psychologically contain me fine uh i'm just gonna keep playing my game and so and sometimes that's also the best strategy and so you know this still looks like the first two games i mean if you guys want just fast forward to the end because i feel like this is 
uh, this, this is gonna have the same result. I really feel like this is gonna have the same result. And, uh, oh, well, I probably didn't even introduce the uh, map that we're on. We are on Atmospheres LE. I really love the decor of the map. You know, a lot of these, uh, these terrazine, these, uh, uh, plant life right here on the side. It's really, really cool. Adds a little bit more of a, uh, aesthetic look, uh, dynamic to, to the map itself. So I really like this inclusion that, uh, uh, that Blizzard, uh, design team has done. Look at those little fishes. Look at that. They're swimming. Okay. And so we do have this lone marine right here. And he is going to pop. Um, unfortunately, it's not underwater. So you're not going to swim up uh, these fishies right here. Looks like it's a lake. Maybe. Yeah. And as you guys can see, I'm paying attention to more of the decor than, than the actual like battle. It's it's really it, it feels like like I'm watching a replay again because everything seems so similar. I mean, the timing of a starport, the timing of the planetary, uh, it, it's so similar from the first two games. And and my money honestly is going to be on on Maru. Uh, we do have a close engagement right here. We try. We will have a, somewhat of a try to. Uh, Maru's gonna try to run by it, but uh, you know, being in control of that Zelnaga tower, Hero's gonna see everything. So run by is not gonna be very, very uh, effective here. We do have some turret missiles bu being built up right here. Uh, we do have sensory towers. You know, uh, Maru is gonna be. Ooh, what the heck? Okay, okay. We I believe we have a command center flying by to the fifth center. There we go. Uh, we do have a command center trying to take a fifth expansion for Maru. We do have a very sizable army right here. Look at all the Vikings. Uh, how many Ravens do we have in this production line here? Let me see the unit count. Uh, we do have five Ravens to two Ravens. There's only two Ravens in this army. Ooh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, the amount of Ravens that we have for this army right here is going to be really nice. And we have an engagement right here in the center. Uh, but those Marines are not going to be, you know, backed up by the siege tank. Um, but these are. And so if these siege tanks siege up when the Marine is like, you know, face planting right in front uh, of them, uh, it's going to be a, a nice, you know, Marine blender juice right there. And so we, we do see a couple siege tanks sieging up, trying to defend the fifth expansion or the sixth expansion, excuse me, for the Red Terran player. We do see a couple of uh, siege volleys uh, hitting these uh, Marines. But the double the medevac right here is going to heal up. Uh, we do see a stim and the Marines are going to go place plant right in. Uh, we do have a disruption field right there. I think it's called a disruption field. I, I really need to go see what the names of these spells are called. Uh, but we do have armor seeking missiles right there, uh, lowering the armor uh, of these bio forces right here. So that means that they're going to be incredibly, incredibly squishy against these siege volleys. Uh, won't take as many siege tanks, uh, siege tank hits to, to pretty much kill them off. And we're going to have to wait for the armor uh, to run out. There we go. And so now we're, we're just going to play around. And there's going to be a massive, massive run by on the side right here with a whole bunch of Marines against three siege tanks. And it's going to take out this uh, this expansion. Wonderful, wonderful uh, skirmish uh, by, by Kira. Now, will Maru be able to do the same? Kira did a fantastic. Oh, wow. We are underwater. Look at these Marines floating up. We are underwater. So Atmosphere's Ellie is an underwater map. Uh, that's why there are fishies. Okay. Fish eyes, fishies. 22 SCVs has one down in that engagement. And that, that is a huge loss. Right now, we are on 85 to 66. And we look at the income tab. Right now, Maru is down by 1,000 in terms of income. But with the help of those mules, it's going to really, you know, kind of close the gap right there. But Maru does need to catch up with the production of the SCVs. He can't really stay for too long. Uh, being underproduced like that, but look at all those effective, effective cancellation uh, disruption fields from the uh, Ravens. And this is the thing when you have a high Raven count, you're able to cancel the siege tanks much more frequently. And you know, uh, Kira doesn't have that many Ravens, and so he has what three Ravens now and trying to produce three more. Uh, he does see the uh, the disadvantage of not having that many ravens, especially when your uh, opponent is going heavier in mech uh, than you are. And so 
uh just being able to take out those six or seven siege tanks in that prior engagement maru really was in the advantage and look at another disruption field or, or, or cancellation field right there is is in play and so it's it's you know it's now maru is putting on the pressure he is going to try to take out these triple command posts right here command centers and if if cure does lose if cure loses this this triple that that is a huge huge loss i mean that's what 900 resources plus uh plus however much it costs to upgrade these uh command centers 150 for orbitals and i believe 150 plus 100 gas uh for the planetary and so just being just losing those command center is going to play a huge huge role uh we do see the command center being uh taken out right here on this uh sixth expansion fifth expansion and we do see a containment right here uh and you know this this is a scary position we do see those armor seeking missiles going out for both sides uh but the viking count for the blue terror player is going to be a little bit higher and we'll be able to take out these uh these vikings i i mean the upgrades are the same you have three three uh for the terran bio right here as well as uh what the two one for the vehicles and one one for the air so uh we will see vehicle uh upgrade level three for uh, for the blue terran player and so if if the level three comes out if the three two comes out for uh maru maru's gonna be in a very good advantage especially when his opponent isn't upgrading right now he's focused on getting a, a attack upgrade level one and maru already has that maru already has upgrades and so maru is at the advantage right now I mean, just taking out those triple command centers right there, that was a big, big play. Big, big play. I mean, I, it's, like I said, Maru, Maru supply account is at the 200 mark. He is going to be containing it. My goodness, that is a lot of Ravens. A lot of Ravens. And so you can see Maru is very, uh, very comfortable with doing a lot of micro, uh, micro style plays. Uh, he's building a lot more spellcasters than his opponent. His opponent is catching up in the spellcaster count, but I don't know if Kira's as comfortable as Maru with his uh, with his micro. Uh, again, when I'm saying comfortable, I mean like just just a little bit, even a couple more actions per minute uh, is going to make a difference in these professional style games. I mean, it's it's just a snowball effect, and so we are going into the 17 minute mark right here. Uh, and both both armies is going to be around. We do see a lot of armor seeking missiles on this, and a huge volley from these two siege tanks, hero siege tanks, taking out quite a bit of the uh, qu quite a number of the uh, bio units right there. And honestly, this this looks to be GG. Honestly, with the auto turrets being forced down, taking out these bio units, which are incredibly squishy right now, and uh, pretty much everything just died out. You have two siege tanks left. I bet you some fields are going to go down exactly. And, you know, we're going to run up the ramp. We have a whole ton of Vikings taking out all those medevacs, all these armor seeking uh, missiles, and as well as auto turrets. And that is GG. Maru has now contained the third win out of the best of five series. So, still any anybody's game, but if maru wins this next game i mean i mean this is this is gg this this will be gg uh and so we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens because you know it's it, it it's 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 coming it's coming i really do hope that cure cure uh updates his uh build order or at least changes his build order for game number four so i'll well, we got one more game after this. Is <laughs> I think this is four games uh, for this series. So I'll see you guys in the next commentary. Take care, everyone.